the centre. Not from the China centre. All right, so this is uh, Unquak Lee from. Um, Disappear. Yeah. Here he is. Um, with questioning social justice, hype for modernizing transnational organizing. Yeah. Thank you much for the um, particular coming thing. He organized such, such interesting um, workshop and he brings back two things for Hong Kong. And uh, first is about social and second about justice. I think which these two uh, adjective or noun, whatever, have never been entered into policy paper. Except the city, yeah, we can have a social harmony and a city uh, workshop for many years in, in, in China and Hong Kong, but I don't think the justice will come back. And, and also, I uh, also thank uh, Christina because uh, I met her uh, maybe a month ago, and, and before that, we were, I was stuck on a, on a plane with, uh, with we, were the, we were a prisoner on a flight in, with Tang Ming Seng on a safe flight, and then we spent 10 hours somewhere, and then it was an interesting journey. In fact, it was also interesting because um, I stay in uh, Mannheim and the Bluetooth happened and I enjoy a lot, uh, not just about the conference, but also about the area of Gable. And then I bumped into um, a very good community of Turkish community in Mannheim, which uh, draw me into a very interesting uh, historical part about the German uh, modernization path in 1950, 70, uh, 60 and 70, how the, the migrant comes. And when I came back to Hong Kong maybe a few weeks ago, it happened I had to take a few of uh, my students to walking around the city. It came back the same memory, namely uh, Hong Kong we changed to such an extent that quite a few of uh, urban spaces, particularly in mobility-based spaces, in metro, uh, train, other things, you bumped into many tourists. Majority of our mainland China. And they speak a language I don't understand, basically. Not because I don't understand Chinese, but but they speak their dialects. Okay, imagine the, the empire of China, uh, 1.3 billion population, most of them speak dialect, basically. And let's go to the official thing. And also, it gives me a very good opportunity. Bear in mind that you should not see me and the PowerPoint. You should see what is the backdrop. I think you've got the best, best backdrop in town that you can see the lion rock. Yes. Namely, I think you should open all the blind here. Right. Even though I escape. And then at least they should put the mirror here, you can see something parallel. And this is what the very famous Hong Kong story began. You've got all the public housing, you've got the very luxurious housing, and you've got still uh, the media centers across the street. And then this is the most interesting part of Hong Kong. Maybe last time we met, we were stuck on the, somewhere inside the uh, community uh, room. You have no view, but now you're totally different. Next time maybe you were on that, another, so, 10 story high. And that's Hong Kong. And that brings to the interesting part of the course of which I try to ask uh, Christine about what about pre modern, yeah? Um, or what, what in my paper I refer to the hyper modernizing. Uh, I am shy of using the word post modern or post material. I'm although, shy also. I'm shy I, also. <laughs> although many of my colleagues, they really have written some paper about post material Hong Kong. I don't think so, okay. Basically, uh, bit by bit, inch by inch, uh, cm by cm, millimeter by millimeter, Hong Kong is very materialistic. Yeah, Hong Kong is very materialistic. And also, Hong Kong become for this day, a bomb to free university, and then I need to check the identity, basically, now. If you don't do this, the cut, you cannot go anywhere, except a Baptist university. You can still walking around without someone checking your identity. And in Polytechnic, I bumped into uh, the notice that you should report any stranger. They are not Hong Kong Polytechnic uh, staff, or they are not accompanied by any Polytechnic staff. And that's the interesting part of the governance here. And that's the interesting part of to a very interesting part, namely the technology and the modernities go into each other, or the pre-modernity, the sense of identity, who we are. Yeah. I don't think you can get, get any lunch even you pay the money in a very capitalist way in Polytechnic now because you need to have a security search about who you are. You have to show the identity card before you get to queue, to queue up, pay for money for the lunch. And that's the interesting part between a super modern architectures of technology, particularly information technology, and the way in which we organize our, our society, namely define who we are or what kind of benefit we are entitled. Yeah. I, locked in, I was locked in with another university office for the lunch time. Just because it happened, I visit my, my friend there, I was 
printing out something in, in, the, in the same office, but I don't have the card, cheap card to come out of the office. I want to go to the toilet, but I cannot go anywhere. I have to borrow one for my colleague. She happened to be lady. You know what happened? I got a card, cheap card. I have to go to the ladies' bathroom to do my business and then come back. And then there are no way to up this, lock up because I can. And this is a phenomenal thing which I refer to the information society, information city. And everywhere you got all this sort of thing we don't see, but all are in a way to organize our life in a very interesting way. And that's the interesting way of which I ask uh, Christian about how about I feel about free more than I feel about tribal group, for example. Uh, we Chinese that they have been. We have got a very interesting uh, debate about the German unification. You bring two different uh, sources of people together in one political system. The, the same applies in Hong Kong. The way in which the Chinese have been used as the as the magic word unification uh, in one of integration, and then there are all kinds of tension happening in different parts of the city now. Even anyone visitor coming to Hong Kong understand there's a tension already to start all the way in the airport. Because every day, many people come in, they visit, and then they shop. Which reminds me, the, the fall of the Berlin Wall car came. All the people coming from the east came, came to uh, Berlin, particularly Berlin, to shop around without the supermarket shop. The same happening in different parts of Hong Kong. Particularly in the border area, you know, you will find the toilet paper are being over uh, taken, taken by the daily traveler, and that's the interesting part of, of, of mobility. And in my paper, I'm more concerned about the way in which uh, this is the Chinese case. For all this reason, the urban and the rural, you know, the distinction already, and then you've got all kinds of problems about the, the uh, modernization projects which is a high organization. In a way, you move the people in the city and then you get a global factory which produces iPad, Apple, you can name it. Yeah. You all have this sort of interesting, but they are organized in such a way. And then you find interesting things at the same time, uh, quite a few of NGOs are now talking about this sort of global structure, whether it's fair trade, fair globalization, yeah. with the help of the information technology. Okay, give you another example is about the uh, development in Asia, which I'm looking into, and this is the, some of the figures by the Asian Development Bank, basically. Yeah. And then you got all sort of what people call divided development. Even in Mongolia, you find the interesting uh, super modern structure, high tech in the downtown, but outside you find it's still very much, I would say, it's just, I'm not using a pre, -develop, a pre modern, but still very much a nomadic way. So you get what people call what I refer to the double, double uh, nomadic, namely the first, the pre-modern one, and then the high flyer, just like every one of us coming to the town, we are somewhat following the uh, logic of the knowledge community. Like, like last month we met with Christine, this month we're here, and then we are sort of normal. In a way, in search of the knowledge, we took conference with after and after. You've got double logics in terms of the normness of the of the pre-modern and also super-modern. Particularly with people running around high-tech uh, mobility on both ends, mobility message, but mobility people running around. I don't know if the, the breakdowns about the regional development, you see the Asian has been, uh, I think East Asian, but the China has been, have been placed by a lot of report by the World Bank that is an interesting development. Here. Particularly, again, responding to uh, previous uh, debate, quite a few of how uh, popular debate about open society have been reconverted into sort of liberal ideas about opening up the economy. Yeah, opening up the economy as thing itself. And that's the interesting part how the European reading of some literature, when you put into the Asian context, is very different. I don't go into the uh, working poor issue, definitely that's a uh, typical case. Some of my local uh, colleagues will tell you it's typically working poor, not just working poor, but also uh, in Hong Kong you've got 300,000 
uh, migrant domestic worker, they uh, live in house in your home to helping the whole uh, social policy in Hong Kong, ranging from the kindergarten to uh, uh, nursing home for the elderly. If any time you go with a very phenomenal thing, if you find some kids, they go to school, if you start with seven o'clock around the, you see one kid carrying nothing, someone, some, some very uh, strong lady, basic lady, yeah, uh, with uh, either Filipino or uh, Indonesian, they carry a big backpack plus a suitcase. They are running for school. They are running for school, they are not running for airport. And that's one of the interesting part which I discovered when I went up early this morning, okay? Normally, how do I sleep a little late? Interesting, you'll find it, it's the normal thing is happening around. And after the school, you'll find outside the school, outside the hospital visiting hour, hospital visiting hour, basically you are basically they served predominantly by the medical mate. And that is interesting part, which I told one of my friends in the high, in the university and also in government, they say, we don't see that. That's not in our policy area. We don't see anything or anything. And that's a reality. And that's the interesting part about on both ends. Hong Kong is still more than city, but we also have got a very interesting migrant community. They are coming here not for residency. They are not the normal type of migrant. According, they will never get any migrant. Uh, and I'm uh, just in status. And that's the interesting part. OK, I will go into another issue about the globalization different social tourism, everyone knows already. <coughs> Contradiction. So you find it interesting, uh, globalization is uh, interesting, but also after uh, 2008, you've got the uh, world economic crisis, and then you find the interesting thing about the debate about, at least from the uh, narrative and rhetoric, people are talking about the globalization is somewhat failed. Yes, it failed. Everyone knows already. Because at least you need the local dimension. It's just a very simple case. I don't think anything can pop into that socket, okay? The socket is also pretty standard still, on Kong side. You need a special pocket. So if the globalization is half, in a way, unless you go to the very top end, then you do. But once you go to the middle and the lower ground level, you find quite dramatic local agenda. So you, I've got, you have got, you should have got, got, got this in my uh, PowerPoint, I don't know if you just, basically it's about development and what type of development, yeah. And that brings me to the very interesting part about the, the, the traditional way of seeing development and a new way of seeing development, I think in the TV series in Hong Kong, I think this week they're showing something about Bhutan. Okay, gross national happiness, okay. Okay, it's become a popular, popular program now. Everyone don't want to be like in the, the kingdom of Bhutan. I don't think Hong Kong can add to anything except on the TV, okay? It's, it's basically, it's, it's a way of, it's, I will refer to uh, Christina thing, we've got more many things coming in at the same time. We want the idea about development, about the diversity, about internationalization, globalization, and back to square one, I think if you talk with the majority of Chinese uh, scholar in Hong Kong, you ask him, what should be China's future? They said China should be should be occupying the moon, okay? Okay, because Chinese there's a legend, okay? There is still a legend that something can fly to the moon, okay? And in fact the naming of the spaceship going to the moon now is after the, the legend. Okay, we have to fulfill that legend and that's a pretty modern thing. But you have got super super modern uh, aviation and and, uh, and also the technological that has happened. So how can you bring the two dimension together? And get back to a very interesting thing about, about the whole debate about technology. And also, perhaps we are missing some paper from, from the African city now. We know the Chinese, um, no, the mainland Chinese, okay, I should refer to that one. Say enterprise going into China and masses. Not just high tech, but also the low tech. Also refer to Tunisian case, also refer to, 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 to the Arab uprising, you surprise time. The major evacuation project for Chinese happened. About 15,000. Oh, are they, they are definitely they are not high tech people. Right? Definitely they are some, something in between. You find the wholesale of the Chinese, which have a spatial uh, footprint around the world now. Not just the high tech, uh, high value, high money, but also the low tech, low menu. The, the, the migration happened not just in the 
uh, expensive or high level cost, but also with the very fine demental types of the uh, migrant, you will find the lower end issues, which happened 100, 150 years ago in Africa. But in, in, in America, you'll find the same types of migrants, which are mixed. And, but now this time is different because the Chinese have to operate as a state operation. It's not military, it's civilian. It's in terms of economic development, and that's design a new way of globalization happening. Yeah. So I don't go to the details about the globalization you will find in my uh, PowerPoint, but uh, just responding to to the case of the uh, what I refer to the uh, mega organization, the projects are in name. It's not just about the city; maybe only a part of the city. That even in Hong Kong, you find a very divided types of. Uh, development in the, the downtown CBD area. Yeah, you'll find just across the corner, you'll find something uh, lower end job there. Uh, they still receive uh, what people refer to uh, minimum wages or even below minimum wages. Yeah. If you've got time, you go into a local restaurant. In downtown, you'll find surprisingly uh, some of the uh, waiters are paid by low uh, minimum wage, but some of them are not by minimum wage either because they were employed as, a, as because of lineage of the ethical network, they connect with the relative in the same restaurant. So they can be, if you think the same time, they can be as a customer. But in a minute later, they can be transformed the status as a servant, which is the same. Okay, I bring you that one, okay. I bring you that one in the local restaurant because, surprise me, there's no break. There are all the running, why did someone sit there and they're becoming waitress dress up the cover and then surf. Definitely there is below with minimum wages, there's another market there. So the Joe Frog case is, is very much the case of the difficulty for, for the government to control of the people. And that's the, the square one which I refer to the, the, the case of logical migration, there's no way you can you can control it. Which is happening only happened in the last hundred years. The migration with passport, with official thing is because of nation state building. Because of that, you can swim to another country. Yeah, everyone knows already. Migration takes place without a passport 100 or 150 years ago. Without nations, they will go, will go anywhere. Sort of a, sort of a, a tribal group, sort of my um, norm. But now they have got very interesting development in terms of the uh, government uh, governance on all kinds of things, uh, which is not the same way which I refer to the... Uh, we are now somewhat in sort of a uh, normative production uh, regime. Namely, uh, people are following very much like the traditional way of the uh, normal. Yeah. Normally, we follow uh, with the animal way they go, basically. But now we follow something, the money where the money goes. China, the big story. Uh, I don't go to the depth, but you'll find, surprisingly, basically, economic uh, growth driven is basically that they're burning the resources. Yeah. If you take over their time, not just in terms of their labor process, but also in terms of energy process. In terms of food supply, uh, energy supply, you find China become a major source of burning the world resources in a way because they have to keep the 8% GDP growth for that reason. That's a state project. It's a project for 1.3 million uh, population. There's aspiration, uh, there's a modern, uh, aspiration for modernization, and then you can just forget about Kingdom of Bhutan, although Bhutan is next door to China. But you'll find interesting that there's a state project which is a little bit different from the American story, from the American empire. American empire was walk, walking on a different uh, path, which happened in the last uh, fifth, post second world war, basically. Where you find the surprising rise of China, <coughs> even for US, it's after, you know, between the two wars and after the second world war and the global war. But the Chinese case is a very interesting case now, becoming phenomenal, and then, uh, it's a bit embarrassing for me to talk with them of my Chinese colleagues sometimes. And they just think, there's a logical way Chinese go. Yeah, we have been poor for so many decades, or 100 years, we should go that way. Yeah, you should shut up. Go back to your Japanese uh, university or somewhere, okay? <laughs> yes, that's it. So I, I can make a claim every time. When I talk anything about China, I claim I work in Japan as a case worker, as a trader, you can say anything. Yeah. <laughs> Even when I was in Germany, people would say, why you just have to study in Germany? Uh, this all the killing country, nothing you can learn from anything. They forget about Holocaust, forget about, we don't see anything. And that's an interesting part. 
And that's interesting why we bring in the primordial idea about development. And that's interesting why we locked into quite a few of my Chinese colleagues here. Respectfully, they are my, they are my senior uh, chair professor, whatever, but the day one they got a child, then I will see the pre-modern Chinese coming, the Mandarin coming into my phrase, and that's the interesting part. That's bring into the what they call something called multi, multiple modernity, multiple tracks. Okay, Charlie here, but don't go to the and refer to the issue, emission, you can name, and that's the part of all the emission. CO, particular CO2 emission is urban based, basically. Modernization based. If you forget about, I don't think people can pollute the environment without the engine, you know, without, without all kinds of basic uh, power. Even in Hong Kong, you don't just see, although the weather is fine, but you find the, the PM 2.5 is becoming a disaster in, in regional terms but because of the emission in Chinese and also the, the urban center. And, uh, the any demand and sustainable, and then just the critical issue about the city. City will become the, the, the place where you have all kinds of uh, um, struggle will be there. The struggle will be based on uh, fresh water, they have the fresh water, you got the, the, the bottled water, I take one as an example. We have water supply, and then uh, you got food, you got all kinds of uh, materials based, which are not just here, but you are talking about some basic material, raw material from different parts of the world. And then global sourcing, which is interesting in the 21st century of urbanization. Urbanization no longer just within the traditional way we see the, the natural resources, conversion of river, all kinds of uh, factors of production. But also the global sourcing of the factors of production in a very interesting uh, organized way in terms of supply chain management, in terms of price taking, in terms of hedging of the even the basic material not hedge according to the logics of, uh, of the math mathematical formula. If you know already, all the finance sector, they actually all kinds of things about anything. Okay, that is the interesting part, and then one of the interesting part which I recently work on about the new energy. For example, new energy will be coming in this part, and that has to be uh, brings in the dimension about German government, after that German government go back. In another back to the original reason that we know more. But it, the Japanese case is interesting in a way, it shows a very interesting case in terms of the, of the sustainability in terms of both ways. In Japan, it's all of a, here we wait for a while, but among Asian countries, you'll find the Japanese economy, Japanese company go direct into different, different parts. They provide uh, subsidies, uh, financial assistance. They become a part of the export industry for Japan, nuclear energy. In competition, in competition with South Korea, and in competition with Chinese, and in competition with the normal player, the French and the American one. Yeah. And then you'll find interesting things happening, although it's a, what I refer to uh, uh, a political learning. I'm not sure, but still very much a debate. And that's the interesting part in terms of the in and out. Okay. And the nuclear energy is much more dangerous than the, than the nuclear warhead, yeah, according to my friend Tony. It's very interesting. If I just want to kill you, I just send you something in form. The nuclear energy, you have, to, you have to keep it for yourself. You wait for the energy to come without exposure. So the technology is much more different and much more high tech and much more dangerous. In other words, we carry the time bomb. Okay, that will be interesting in a way because we are in a competitive uh, regime of, of development. Even nuclear energy, even with the expo explosion in, in, in Japan, still not just explosion in Japan, but also <coughs> how many years ago, almost 25, 96, 86, you got Chernobyl. Yeah, you got Chernobyl at that part of Europe, and then after that you got a repetition, and then the next one will come. I, uh, I'm not sure, but... Not far away from here, okay? The next one, we have got more nuclear energy around Hong Kong than you can think of. And that's the interesting part, but still, the very much de uh, developmental potential is very much saying that if you want a new city, you have to have the energy. If you got energy, the, the best energy with the cheapest, the safest, the cleanest, cleanest with scientific, all kinds of scientific knowledge, nuclear. Plus Chinese technology. 
<laughs> has some technology, okay? <laughs> I should not say that. <laughs> but I have to say China technology, eh? if you go to international one, you will check with technology. Eh? In fact, some of my students, they got graduation, they got to cheaper job to do the PR public relations stuff. And that's the interesting part. You see the company, even the Indian now trying to export some new tech. And that's the interesting defining feature. In other words, uh, maybe 100 years ago, when we talk about city, we talk about the concentration of people. We talk about maybe uh, 500 years ago, we talk about 600 years ago, we talk something about the green structure, about the ruling class, they, they build their own city, so that you know already the hands just stop. Yeah, they have their own system. But now maybe in the 21st century, basically we we'll talk about energy consumption. Yeah. Energy consumption debate, the most energy consumable part is the city. And that's interesting part, and that would be defining feature for the uh, global sorting. Okay, the nuclear energy power plant, which I work on some projects, uh, still not finishing, but interesting in a way, you will see the competition coming out, and more and more of the uh, energy sourcing will be targeting the developing country. I think in Southeast Asia, even for Indonesia, yeah, even for Indonesia, they have got very rich resources for all kinds of bio, biofuel to palm oil to all kinds of things, but still they are moving on that one. And everyone knows already why they move on that one. Because if you got milk, you got you are the upper class. Okay? Because you can trans transform the uh, nuclear energy into nuclear power easily. Without the other one. Yeah. Although I, uh, that's the interesting part in, in a way because my work is now working more on the energy stuff other than the people. But they go into each other in a way. So this is the, maybe the middle part of, 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 of my presentation, but I want to end this part here, and then I would be more than happy to have some uh, discussion. Because the issue is about the technology, the cities, and definitely, uh, as the, the title of this uh, workshop implies, social justice meaning we don't have, so, we don't have much social justice. This is the reason why we talk. Okay, unless the other country, uh, other places, they call social harmony, and, uh, and the city, I think you can find this in North Korea, propaganda and other part of the related regime. They say social harming forever. Yeah. And then you can, you can expect celebration. I think if the, if, the, if the machine touch the moon today or tomorrow, there will be celebration. No one come out And if we fulfill the dream or the legend that we have got something Chinese, not lady, the machine, okay, somewhere in the room, yeah. we say hello and then you see. Yeah. You're more than welcome. Enjoy the wheel, okay? And then I will ask. Uh, Wen Sing will give a briefing about that part of Lion Law. Okay, it's become a legendary story for uh, Hong Kong people. <laughs> yeah, I think the radio television Hong Kong will, make, will remake another episode about the story about under the Lion Law. What they call? Yeah, that was the uh, fundamental about economic development in Hong Kong. You got social mobility. Even the poorest people in, in, in the street can become a millionaire like uh, Li Kai now. And that was the story. That was the legend. And then I think they are now trying to make. It's nice to be here because I can see the first time about Lion Law mm -hmm. from this group. Yeah. Luckily, we have the University with the donation, all kind of money coming to pull up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you much. Time for questions? Um, maybe it's a little bit more in addition and the question as well. Please, can you, can you go back to the second last slide? This one? This one? No. No. Second last. Yeah. yeah. This one and the next one. Um, yeah, the apocalyptic, uh, uh, apocalyptic learning survival. Um, I, I uh, developed the cosmopolitan, uh, the, the cosmopolitical moment in my migration discourse, and I was inspired from Ulrich Beck. Ulrich Beck, yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, it seems very similar. What he said, the cosmopolitic, uh, cosmopolitical view. Uh, it's the. Uh, can you can you explain a little bit the difference in between the apocalyptic learning and this was Beck was argument in his cosmopolitical view. For me, it seems yeah. very similar. 
the idea behind that maybe I just... Uh, yeah, the idea was behind that research because I, read, I first read, in fact, I, in fact, I read the first German book was given by my teacher is the uh, ex uh, risk Society. Because, mm -hmm. uh, ah, okay, yeah. yeah. And, and in fact, the learning part is very much... Um, I would say this is... Uh, I, I would say it's a group I could pass it in a way, but the learning part is becoming one the whole industry in a way. The whole industry of learning without learning, basically. Mm -hmm. If you see, see, the, see the process happening, a lot of people are uh, doing about uh, research about radiation, about the, the, uh, the uh, what they call the, how, how the radiation spread, and what they call emission model, that sort of thing. A lot of money put into learning. So called learning from the mistake. Mm -hmm. And they have to keep on the, the, the regime. And which I put that question mark because I don't think that's a learning. Mm -hmm. Once you hurt, you learn something, you should not do this. <laughs> but, but basically now, the whole objective now for learning is uh, we have to keep on the nuclear energy as long as we work on the whole industry of learning. And that's, I think some of my colleagues can tell you Hong Kong spend more money in uh, uh, higher for, for lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. I don't think they learn much. <laughs> and that's exactly the point, which I put a question mark. I think I'll, you originally we'll go back to facts argument will be very fundamental. Yeah, because I think here, um, he also has the, <laughs> maybe he has also the idea of learning behind in his mind, but he's uh, dealing more with the, with the political arena yeah, yeah, yeah. and how to regulate um, this, what you say, the apocalyptic. Uh, Things. Um, so maybe it, it would be very good for you to go back to, or very interesting to go back once more to to, and to find out what he said. The fact um, has been to transform into English by Scotch and Latin and get us into yeah. something about about something different. And yeah. I can give you a, a citation. You find some citation about Hong Kong. I think one of my uh, colleagues he had written something about facts in a very different way already. Mm -hmm. Namely, Hong Kong has been learn much from Beck's argument that Hong Kong is in post material already, Hong Kong has and all the all the things which is becoming sort of label. Not yeah. actual language. Yeah, but, but I think Beck isn't dealing with the labels. He's yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the translation of Beck's out that what they call the uh, milieu, the the environment has been put into a different uh, dimension. <coughs> no one drew back to the origin of the issue. And I have another <coughs> question. May I? Yes. yes I so. Sorry, sorry, we were just. No, no, no problem. Um, I was asking the audience. No. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, about the, the. Please give me the next slide. That was yep. something. Um, no. The next one. Next one. Uh, it, it, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, because we had we had the, the accident <laughs> yeah. in the last um, uh, climate uh, okay. peak uh, um, uh, last week, two weeks ago, that all the non-governmental organizations left. Yeah, left. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this can you comment it? Because what is it? Game over. Game over. No, it, no, it wasn't game over. I, I think the game over is not from the NGO. The yeah. game over is for the government or UN institution. Yeah. On that observation, yeah. because I bumped the dump, I can tell you that there's no, no one in in in, in, in this. And that's part of diplomacy, because if the convention is named after a place, normally the country who have so-called the term of that place they will push more. But the post Kyoto Agreement, I don't think there will be any one interest. No, basically now it's an issue about no one, no country wants to host that sort of embarrassing meeting. <laughs> for, for obvious reasons, which is, this is the reason why the Japanese and Japanese side is to sidestep the issue. They don't want to be associated in a sort of, oh, we achieved something some time ago, but this time. And then you, have, you don't have actual play. And then, interesting, if you can really go to the G10, G20, I think that those countries, they are developing, developing high, highly modernizing countries. They basically, they forget about anything. We have to achieve the same level of US uh, uh, emissions first, then we'll talk about economic development, uh, uh, environmental protection. Let's, let's burn the world first before, <laughs> before we do something. And that's exactly the mentality. Even you talk with many so-called uh, economists, they are now this sort of mentality. You don't have 
and that's the world is partially de partially burned to such an extent. I think a city, I think city would create a very interesting thing. If the city, if the city related more than disaster come, that may be a possibility change. Unlucky. You can see them meetings after meeting about about diversity, UN, uh, IPCC, and then you got all the things. Even for all you know already, you, you know your government. I think one of the, the, the government were ever active in environmental policy. They are very much tracked by economic policy. So then it, it's, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. Really interesting. I can tell you, major really interesting story about Japanese industry. Most of Japanese PVC cells are developed by Japanese, but they sell over the other country. So they adopt, they now they have to re-import the PVC the solar cell from China. <laughs> which is interesting, which is ironic, in an ironic way. The technology has been developed by the German technology in terms of renewable energy, but you have to, it's not a term. And that is the interesting part, which is becoming uh, problematic for the urban question now, and that is not seen. You can see a lot of people migrating, people, people you can see, okay, uh, sometimes you don't see, okay. If you take a different type of transportation, normally you don't see sometimes, then yeah, you know already, okay. Some of my friends, they took the, 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 the government, uh, provide an official car, official automobile, so they don't see the world basically. Okay. And then that's a the world for them. And then I think uh, apparently getting to where we're going for tea is very complicated. Uh, so we need to get going soon. But first, let me thank all three panelists for a very stimulating. Um, it's a slight complication. Um, first of all, yeah, uh, to, to make the long story shorter, uh, this is not the room that we would like to have the uh, workshop, but the only one that we could get. And then when we got it, uh, we want to put things outside the corridor, the faculty of the thin allow us to do it. So we couldn't have tea just outside. So it's complication is we have to go 